We're so glad that you chose to be here today. We come together, not as a random collection of people, but as a family God is calling together. In that spirit, let's take a moment to turn to the folks near us and greet each other with a warm word of welcome. If you have your cell phone with you and use Facebook, please take a moment to check in here at church. It's a great way to witness that going to Mass is an important part of your week and just might be the encouragement someone needs to join us. After that, kindly ensure that your cell phone is in the silent mode. We pray in a special way for Ron Gallery, whom, this, whom we remember in a particular way during this Mass. For young people in the Congregation of Christ Initiative Collaborative, on August 6th, you are invited to hike Mount Monadnock. Please pick up a bulletin for more information. I invite you to open your missalettes to song number 428 and lift your voices in our gathering song, Amazing Grace. Son of the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. And with your spirit. I'm Bishop Arthur Kennedy, Auxiliary Bishop of the Archdiocese of Boston, and I'm here, delighted to be here, um, to help with uh, Father Tom and the other priests who serve you. Uh, one of the priests, as you probably know, is, is ill, and so Father Tom McDonald asked me if I'd come up from Boston to be with you today. And so it's a wonderful time for me to be here. I've never been in, in this parish, parish before. I have many confirmations, but um, I haven't yet been to Topsfield, so it's nice to be with you. Yes, Brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our oh. sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, the Lord said, The outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great, and their sin so grave, that I must go down and see whether or not their actions fully correspond to the cry against them that comes to me. I mean to find out. While Abraham's visitors walked on farther toward Sodom, the Lord remained standing before Abraham. Then Abraham drew nearer and said, Will you sweep away the innocent with the guilty? Suppose there were 50 innocent people in that city. Would you wipe out the place rather than spare it? for the sake of the fifty innocent people within it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to make the innocent die with the guilty, so that the innocent and the guilty would be treated alike. Should not the judge of all the world act with justice? The Lord replied, If I find fifty innocent people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Abraham spoke again. See how I am presuming to speak to my Lord, though I am but dust and ashes? What if there are five less than fifty innocent people? Will you destroy the whole city because of those five? He answered, I will not destroy it if I find forty-five there. But Abraham persisted, saying, What if only forty are found there? He replied, 
I will forbear doing it for the sake of the forty. Then Abraham said, Let not my Lord grow impatient if I go on. What if only thirty people are found there? He replied, I will forbear doing it if I can find but thirty people there. Still, Abraham went on. Since I have thus dared speak to my Lord, what if there are no more than twenty? The Lord answered, I will not destroy it for the sake of the twenty. But he still persisted. Please let not my Lord grow angry if I speak up this last time. What if there are at least ten there? He replied, For the sake of those ten, I will not destroy it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, you were buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God who raised him from the dead. 
And even when you were dead in transgressions and uncircumcision of your flesh, he brought you to life along with him, having forgiven us all our transgressions, obliterating the bond against us with its legal claims, which was, which was opposed to us, he also removed it from our midst, nailing it to the cross. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone in debt to us, and do not subject us to the final test. And he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend to whom he goes at midnight and says, friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived at my house from a journey and I have nothing to offer him. And he says in reply from within, do not bother me, the door has already been locked and my children and I are already in bed. I cannot get up to give you anything. I tell you, if he does not get up to give the visitor the loaves because of their friendship, he will get up to give him whatever he needs because of his persistence. And I tell you, Ask, and you will receive. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks the door will be opened. What father among you would hand his son a snake when he asks for a fish? Or hand him a scorpion when he asks for an egg. If you then, who are wicked, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. One of the most important elements of the readings today is this understanding of the importance of asking, seeking, knocking. The story about Abraham and Sodom is interesting in the fact that the kind of religion in which Abraham grew up, which was a religion basically under which everything was predictable by the cycles of the cosmos. It was a cosmogonic religion. There was no room for human intelligence. There was no human for human freedom. Everything was predictable and fated. 
And one of the awakenings that we see in the story of Abraham in his conversion is his hunger to be away from this kind of madness. And so he's seeking for God. And as he seeks for God, God answers him. Because the seeking and the answer really, in God's sense, are simultaneous. God draws him to himself and frees him from the culture of death in which Abraham and all of his cohabitors are living. And so he has nothing that is able to give him any sense of human dignity. The dignity comes in the capacity of the human freedoms of being used in such a way that it seeks to know what is and what is the source behind it. Abraham finds God as God reveals himself to Abraham. And this little part that we hear from Genesis today is a very interesting one. Abraham speaks to God with questions. They're questions about the possibility of how when freedom goes wrong, that God's graciousness and mercy can touch us. Abraham could never talk to the cosmos. He could never talk to the cycles of the moon and expect to get an answer. But he can talk to God. He questions God. He tells us in the book of Genesis how it is that he dares to speak to his God. Indeed, not only dares, but he is encouraged to speak. As the questions continue to grow, as the power and depth of the mercy becomes revealed, Abraham is encouraged. Abraham is begun to understand himself in a way that God wants him to understand, that he is beloved by God. And all of the creatures that God has made are beloved by God. Last Sunday we heard the gospel about Mary and Martha. That was a very interesting gospel in that it really was a question that Martha posed to Jesus In a sense, Martha was concerned that Mary had a certain way of life that obviously was very deep and meditative and contemplative. She was thinking a great deal about God. And Martha was wondering who was going to do the dishes. And her question to Jesus is, if I only do this, is it enough? When we look at the love of God, we divide it up in ways that God does not divide it up. Martha, he says to her, do not be troubled. The love that God has for you is complete and is sufficient. Today then we hear this new way in which the love comes to us to the divine mercy. And we hear as well how it is that we are to uh, speak with God. The disciples say, yes, yes, you know, John's disciples, he taught, John taught them how to pray, how to be intimate, how to be close to God, how to be bonded with God, how to be able to bring our worries to God how to be give thanks to God. Will you teach us how to pray, they ask him. And he teaches them the Our Father, the prayer that we say all the time. That prayer which speaks to God in the way in which he is the, the source of all things. He is the one who has the ability to provide us with our daily bread. He's the one who gives us mercy and invites us to be merciful 
to those with whom we live. And then he talks to them about perseverance. Yeah, so you say it once, you say the Our Father once, and it seems as though nothing happens. You knock on the door of your friend who you're looking to find some bread from, and nothing happens. But he tells them, it isn't the the asking that is sufficient. It must be, you must persevere. You must be faithful. You must continually ask God. And this is one of the reasons that for us, as, as Catholics, the saints become so important. Because the saints are those who have been successful in perseverance, who have become those whom God has called in a unique way to allow their love to be manifest to others so that others may be encouraged. Because after all, we are all called to be saints. And being saints doesn't mean we are perfect. Being saints means We do what Christ has asked us to do and to become the carriers of his promise of redemption for the whole world. We are his messengers. And so we pray persistently. It is in one sense the reason that the church has as the commandments that come to us even from the Old Testament of keep holy the Sabbath, of keep holy the Sabbath, being persistent in our gratitude to God. And then, of course, the constancy of continuing to seek. What is God asking us to seek in this this context? He's asking us to seek a closer bond with him so that we can grow more deeply into his presence, that we know him whenever we are in trouble and whenever we are joyful. We know the presence of God with us. And so, it's a long journey from Abraham's living within the world of cosmic deities that don't answer anything because they aren't conscious. They're simply cycles of repetition going nowhere, repeating themselves again and again. But our God acts out of love and care. And our God is always seeking to hear from us in what way we need the special kind of assistance that he can grant to each of us, the special gifts that each of us needs, the special tasks that we have. And the other thing that is so important about this is that it creates the whole church. For if there are those who are not sufficient in doing what needs to be done, the whole church supplies. The whole church, in its prayers, you think of nuns in convents doing nothing, but they pray. They pray for us. They pray for the whole of the church. They pray for the graces that we need to be able to, to know our God and to love him well. And so the mystery of God's love overcomes the mystery of evil. It grants us the importance of our freedom, the importance of our intelligence, the importance of the way he has created us and the way in which he redeems us. Let us now join together and say the prayer, which is the creed of our faith, the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. 
begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who is the Father and the Son, and the Son and the Lord, and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one the holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. O loving God, we turn to you always to ask you to intercede for us and to hear our prayers. For the church, as we strive to model for the rest of the world, what it means to be a deeply, in a deeply committed relationship with our loving God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the peoples of the world might truly listen to one another, hear the cries of anguish and despair, and respond in charity to all those in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For daily bread for all those who hunger, given through the generosity that they have learned from our gracious God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That parents respond in love to their children and that families grow stronger in their bonds of love for one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a deepening and growing relationship with our loving God during the Jubilee Year of Mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. For Ron Gallery, who we remember in a particular way during this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, God. Oh, gracious God, we give you thanks for allowing us to be able to speak with you heart to heart. We ask you to continue to watch over us and to guide us and to help us when we are in trouble. We praise you and we remember through all of your saints the mercies that you have bestowed on them and on us. We ask that you continue to give, grant us your peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join us in our hymn for preparation. Number 431, Seek Ye First.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hand for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to these gifts of yours, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we meet this world and bring this song, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Rose of Lima, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Sean our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and your honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join us in our communion hymn, number 342, One Bread, One Body.
Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Before the final blessing, Father MacDonald left a little notice and he asked if I would read it uh, so that you would understand some of the issues related to uh, matters today. Late Thursday afternoon, the Augustinians called to say that Father Keith was not feeling well and would not be available to help with Masses this weekend. We pray that Father Keith will soon be back to good health. The immediate problem we face in these situations is covering our two 10 o'clock masses, one at St. Agnes, one at St. Rose. 
We have come up against this difficulty three times in the past 18 months. Given the declining number of priests available to help our parishes, we can only anticipate greater mass coverage difficulties in the future. This makes our having two masses at the same time increasingly difficult to manage. Over the next several weeks, Father Michael, Father Tom, and the Pastoral Council will be seeking your input on how best to address this problem. Please pray for Father Keith's quick recovery. Well, it's been a great pleasure being with you this morning. Thank and you, um, I certainly will keep you in my prayers today and during the rest of this week as well. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Please join us in our closing hymn. Number 635, Blessed Are They. Yeah, 